Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are right now, in this instant, I'm in the future. My name's Jade, this is How to App on iOS, and we are back after a crazy day yesterday. Howdy do, folks. I hope you're all doing okay. Lots going on. Well, there was yesterday and uh, today, <sighs> going to be a breather. Um, so let's jump straight in and say, firstly, howdy do to those of you who are watching on Facebook. Today it is streaming over on my personal page. So if the sound quality is, <coughs> you can always jump over to the show here on YouTube and watch it live and join in the chat here, or you can leave me a comment over there on Facebook. Now over here to the people who are on YouTube. G'day, 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 g'day. Hi, Scott, who's in the chat. Gary Hubs, Tom Rochelle, Benedict Stewart, Stu Cash. Uh, anyone else? Deep Gravity, welcome aboard you too. And that is all I can see here for now. They're all saying hello to each other and big ups and big thumbs. Speaking of thumbs up, if you want to leave a thumbs up on this video, feel free to. That makes me happy as well. Got a few people watching on Facebook as well, so hello to you, I can see also. All right, let's jump straight in. We are looking at my film, my... Uh, mo um, how cool was that? Um, we are today looking at my music video for my Methiest EP for World Divided. But uh, let's catch up on what went down yesterday for everybody. So uh, um, <laughs> the show was incredibly late yesterday because I slept in. Why? I'll tell you why. Here's why. Because I was watching that absolutely boring Apple event. And um, and that was at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I had a couple of beers and I was bored out of my tits. So bored. I thought I'll go lay down for a bit, rest my eyes. Got a couple of hours before the show and I forgot to set an alarm and I slept through my show. But I came back a couple of hours later and we did a show on Odell Odessly, which is a... Uh, a website that you can collect all your uh, digital distribution links and put them all into one place and um, show them off to the world or embed them into a website. So if you missed yesterday's episode, you can go back and have a look at it because it's always on demand. What else happened? I'll tell you this now before we get into the show. I did an interview, uh, not yesterday, Australian time, the night before, pre-recorded interview for a radio program. I will post the link on the GarageBand Users Guide, on Create, Record, Release, and on my personal pages um, a bit later on today, if you would like to hear that live, because that's going to air on a Melbourne radio station here in Australia about my Methiest EP, and it was really cool. I'm really thankful for the guys um who interviewed me on the radio show how cool is that hey so i did an ep for song timber in four weeks just messing around and i'm doing a radio interview for it who would have thought that kind of stuff can even happen hey pretty pretty sick stuff and we all are doing it on our devices that's really cool uh SM Borthwick has joined us as well in the chat. So hello to you, my friend. Good to see you as well. Um, what else do I need to go over? We have an interview tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. So I'll let you know I've been working on the assets for the interview. So for the first time on this show, we're doing an interview with not one person, but two people tomorrow two people and look at this i've been working on this uh, all last night to give you a sneak preview we have a three screen interview for tomorrow and as you can see there's Stu cashmore andy goldsby and we have this little small interview screen with three people to the side and we've got like a guest interview screen with one for Stu and one for andy and one for me so all of this has been set up for tomorrow so that's really cool isn't it and I reckon it's going to be a really fun interview tomorrow because uh, Andy and Stu have their amazing album. By, uh, they're called The Indigo Sunsets. If you haven't checked it out, it's going to be fucking sick. Yeah, you like that, Gary? <laughs> Gary's put in the chat a jade sandwich. I put myself in the middle on purpose. So when each of them are talking, I can look left and right. 
I reckon yeah, we'll go back to that. I reckon that's going to be really fun to have someone on each side of me. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be really cool. Um, and I feel a bit privileged, actually, because I'm going to be the first person to get to interview these guys about their new album. And it's going to be launched on Sunday. And that's that's really exciting. So um, I'm, I can't wait. And I guarantee you, folks, I think it's going to be not very safe for work, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know I'm going to be loose with the swearing on that particular day because it's the end of the week for me and I can say whatever the fuck I want. So let's jump in and have a look at what we normally do. Any apps on sale, anything like that. And I'm enjoying my new Elgato screen thing from my iPhone where I can change screens so super easy. Um, so one thing you may notice here, this Korg Pro module, if you're into Korg uh, audio gear, this thing's super expensive normally at $39.95 US. It's down to um, $19.99, which is pretty cool. So if you haven't got a hold of that, I would do that because it's, it's highly recommended. It's a really killer app. For me in Australia, it's actually still around $39. So I've had to hold off. Maybe I'll, I'll message Korg and say, please, can I have a copy to play with? Uh, but uh, yeah, look, a lot of people rave that this thing's a great app. I've seen, watched many videos, how-to videos on this Korg Module Pro. And um, yeah, a lot of people say it's a fantastic app. Always see lots of good reviews for it. And what the fuck is... What the fuck is... Right, you guys can't see this, but iTunes is just opening up on my computer for some reason and i haven't opened itunes forever and it's just deciding to just open up dude piss off all right we got rid of that nice um i don't know why that happened anyway so what else we got for uh for cheap here so flux liquid audio by um uh, four pockets our friends at four pockets is down a couple of dollars doesn't look like there's much else here to that has come down in anything that catches my eye anyway a couple of metronomes holy shit just, just not for nothing but who would buy a metronome for 31 dollars <laughs> wow unbelievable yeah i don't know someone's buying it there's got to be someone out there who's buying that shit all right a bit of asmr coffee because we haven't done that for a while Oh yeah. All right, before we jump into this bizzo, let's have a look at where we're up to with the video clip. So I made a copy. I played this yesterday a couple of times as well. If you missed the show yesterday, let's do it again anyway. I think it goes for a minute anyway. So let's play this sucker. Some of the stuff that I've added into this. Um, do we have sound? We probably don't. And I have to do my magic trick. There we go. Click, click. Clickety click. Pick up sticks. Let's, there we go. Now we've got sound. So this is where I'm kind of up to and I'll let you know where we're going. where that cuts off there but 
we're going to jump out of here and jump straight into Luma Fusion, and I'll show you what we're doing today. So here we are in the project. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is here, let's show you. So within each of these, um, within each of your little video scenes here, right, when you click on them, I'll show you. Let's double click on this and it opens up in the edit scene. Now, if you have, you want to catch up uh, on the last two videos of here, I will link you on a card right now up above if you're watching on the replay, which will take you to the last video, which was showing how I added the storyboard green screen images into this project. Um, now, what you'll see here is I'll just drag the mouse over. There's this little folder button down here within LumaFusion. Uh, and what, what you use this for, it's really handy for copying and pasting effects that you've put on one particular piece of video. Just say you've got, you, you've, just say you've put in a long piece of video and then you've started chopping it up into heaps of different pieces, but you haven't laid effects on, on the whole thing. So now you're like, oh, hang on, hang on, what have I got to do? I, I've got to go back now and add effects to each of those individual individual pieces that I've cut up stupidly. Well, with this little folder here, you can actually open it up, you can click on it, and you can copy all the effects that are in that particular frame of film. So if I hit copy now, I can close this out, and I can go to other images here, which are, what I'll do now is I'll, let's go to this, where are we? Um, we'll find, so this one here of this dude, I can double click there and I can actually go down to this little folder again. And now you see there's a paste option and it shows all the effects above that I've got copied into my, my little copy um, section. So if I hit paste, it adds in so and what it does is it, it adds in the same if you've changed the um, size of the the video so if you've zoomed in a little bit it keeps all that information it keeps the chroma key information any of these um, things like contrast any of these effects that you've you've added across the top here any of these it saves all of those um, anything down here like reversing your, your video the sound it copies all of that so that's really cool. It's a really helpful. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is go back and find all the video with the singer jumping around like a dickhead. There's another one. So I'm going to zoom into this and I'm going to paste those settings. Oops, where are we? We're going to paste those settings. And, and here's the good bit too. So you actually don't have to double click on the image to do it. You can actually do it from the outside because look it's down here as well this little clipboard so all you have to do is clip on the file so I've got two here I'm going to clip on this one and then down to this little clipboard and hit paste so those have been added to that and now I'll do the same for this one hit paste you see it's a little bit different so what I might do is let's get out of that one because I actually had a really good look for that one. I can go back actually twice. So, but what I'm going to do today is we're actually going to remove all these. So the reason I actually did that in the first instance was I just wanted to copy these settings. So we'll do them again, copy. And now I'm going to remove all these vocalist clips here because I want to show you how I, how we're putting these into this clip. Um, so what do we got? We got um, one here. Let's get rid of this. Delete. Bye. I uh, deleted the wrong one. Oh, I'm really rocking today. Let's undo that. And let's do this. Delete. Let's. Uh, where are we? We got a vocalist. There's one there. One there. That one, delete. Uh, so that's what I did wrong. I did it on the wrong thing. So delete, delete. Sound like Matt Hardy if you're into the wrestling. I don't think there's any other clips of the singer in here. Only that one. 
So we'll delete that. And we'll delete. So they're all gone. All the singer clips are now gone. And what I'm going to do is bring in the singer track again and fix all that up. So that was stupid. I added it to the wrong one. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So as you can see, um, over here, these are the files. Um, so these bottom, these bottom three files over here, uh, the uh, tracks that I have. So the, there's one guitarist one here and two vocalist ones. Now I'll let you know, I haven't done any more work on the other characters because my masks haven't arrived yet. Uh, they've been held up um, because of uh, COVID due to the postage and all that kind of shit going on. It's really pissing me off. Um, but it looks like they're both coming either today or tomorrow. One's being put back till tomorrow and the other one says either today or tomorrow. So I'm really hoping, I really want them to be here so I can work on this over the weekend. Um, that's where I'll be doing all my work. And just so you know, these takes that you're seeing here, I actually won't be using them. Probably some of this, this guitarist track that I used. I got some really good takes out of this guitarist track. I'll probably keep some of that. But what I am gonna do, cause there's not much room in my tiny little bedroom here. Um, and I'll show you with this Singer file that I'm going to import, because there's so little room in front of my green screen, with all my great lights on and stuff, I'm standing so far back and so close to the actual green screen that it's picking up a lot of shadow of me onto the green screen. So no matter what I try and do to even out the green screen using the, uh, the powers that be within LumaFusion to make the background disappear, it's proving to be hard because of the shadows that are appearing under my arm. But that's only because I'm in such a really small space and I need to be much further in front of my green screen than what I can in my tiny little room. So over the weekend, I'm gonna be taking down my lights, my laptop uh, the, with the camera, the green screen and my drum kit and all the costumes. And I have a huge space downstairs that I can uh, set up down in the garage it's nice and dark down there i can put my lights down on in there and plenty of room to jump around so that's what i'm planning to do to get all these shots done in one day because i should be able to get them all done within a couple of hours just changing the costume and jumping around and then bringing all the footage up but that's why i did tests up here during this week to see how i would go in such a small space but as you're about to see when i bring in this um file you'll see the problem i'm having so there you go. Um, and uh, there's some questions here. So Deep Gravity asks, are you doing a scene slowly licking the zipper on your GIMP mask? There will be a lot of close-ups of the GIMP mask, a lot of them. Some with the one eye zipped up, some without one, and some with the mouth zipped up. Um, so there'll be quite a, a lot of close-ups for that. Uh, Gary, I almost think you should cover your hands and neck. Don't worry, I have that covered. So I actually have a black skivvy, which is all put away for that. So that's all covered. Plus I have some pretty cool fingerless gloves that I prepared yesterday after watching this footage. So I have been looking at this going, I've got to cover my hands. Um, so, and as I said yesterday for the old lady, I have this um, jumpsuit. It's a Jenna, it's a JLo, Jennifer Lopez black jumpsuit it's um from one of her video clips which i bought a, a while ago so i'll be wearing that with i have some crazy 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 thigh high um shiny boots that are like eight inch heels so the grandmother will be wearing the fuck me boots with the eight inch heels spiked heels fishnets and the j-lo jumpsuit so that'll be pretty fucking demented as well so yes so let's drag in this file uh, make sure I got the, the right one here. Just let it populate. Pretty sure this is the one. Yep. So um, we'll drag this in. So just drag this into the timeline. And I see Russ has joined the chat as well. So welcome aboard, Russ. Um, so as you can see, let's have a look at the clip. So you can see what's going, see the shadowing. 
and you can see that I'm brushing up against the um, I'm so close to the green screen that you can see it bouncing back and forward and that's creating a wave so that's creating problems when I'm trying to add the green screen <laughs> so I'll just play you through the whole footage and you'll see I don't know if it's got sound we'll turn the sound down so it's not too loud so this is the take that I did I'll try and get the music so it's right at the start, actually, as well. I'll just um, pull this back. And we're looking about there. So it should be pretty close to matched up, the music. I'll zoom in a little bit more. I think the music starts here. Uh, does it? What do I do then? Oh, let's go there we go so the music starts about there so let's have a look hey what's going on erica good to see you so yeah you can clearly see you can clearly see that green screen is getting this is how not to record in front of a green screen so i thought i would show you guys this uh, roots, you know, mistakes and all, so you know what not to do. And <laughs> do you know how hot it was in this fucker? Oh my god. <laughs> I thought I, I kept wanting to swim in it. <laughs> Fucking hell. Because it's all matched up at the moment, too, I can just chop bits out here and like, see, this bit here would be really good to use. Look at me, I'm trying to. With the hands fucked up, I'm trying to zip up the eye for a different view. I couldn't grab it. I'm just going, fuck. Now I know what it's like to be in a straitjacket. <laughs> Imagine if my neighbors could see me doing this shit as well. See, I can zoom in on this. These, I can get close-ups here. I'm thinking also to, before I put the mask on, I'm going to put some double-sided tape inside the mask above the eyes and below the eye. So it sticks so I can keep the eye, the zips as open as much so you can see my eyeball nice and clearly. So I got some double-sided tape yesterday. By this time, I was about to have a heart attack. I, was, I couldn't breathe, like, <laughs> dripping sweat. <laughs> Fuck, I'm a dickhead. But again, you can see down in this bottom right-hand corner, this is where the problems were. It's getting so much shadow in there, and you can see it keeps moving. The green screen. Yeah, no shit, Gary. The, the things we do for art. <laughs> so this is where I'll definitely have a close-up of the GIMP mask talking those words. Say, so that looks cool. That's why I need double-sided tape. Because you want to see my eyes in there, like... Deep Gravity says, sticking that thing to your face might not be the best idea. It's not like the wind <laughs> when you when you pull a face and <laughs> and the, the wind changes and you're left with that forever. The mask is actually easy to get off. So look, lucky I have someone here to help me get this shit on and off. So if I skip forward a bit, I actually tried to do some addition. This is me. <laughs> do you know what I'm doing here? I'm like, fucking hell, why can't I fucking stop the video? I fucking, why can't I stop? Um, fucking stop. Stop. <laughs> Look how long it goes for. 
with my hands in that stupid thing for ages. I'm going, fucking, come on. And then finally, I think I'm going to give up. I'll leave the video running and I'll try and turn off the lights. And I, so I was going to buy a strobe light, but I've already spent way too much money on this video clip. So what I did was, and I'll show you at the end of, um, at the end of this show. So remind me. I bought this, I went to buy a strobe app and luckily I'd already bought one ages ago, which is still compatible with iOS. It, it, it's only recently been updated as well. So what I'm, I'm doing is I've got three phones. Uh, so I've got my iPad Pro leaning up against, uh, underneath the camera and a iPhone um, SE and an iPhone um, 6S all running the strobe light at the same flash instead of buying a strobe to create a strobe effect. And so I tried to do it here. Look at me trying to turn off the lights. And I tried to do it here with my iPad. You can only see these little glimpses of me coming in. But there could be some really good ones if I lighten this. There's a few in there, like you can just see my eye, but I can lighten this video, but I think I can do much better anyway by actually having it set up. And the good thing is, like you can just see me there. The good thing is once I move this downstairs um, into, um, down into the garage, at least I'm closer to my flatmate who can help me get out of this costume. I think I'm gonna shoot all these bits last too because they're the, the most dangerous. So anyway, let's chop this from about here. That'll do. We'll chop it from about here. And yeah, we can delete that for now. So that's now gone. And let's try adding this in to this footage and see what we can do. Uh, yeah, there's a, a, a strobe. I did find that too while I was looking Tom Rochelle, a strobe website. Uh, it's SM Borthwick says, maybe you just need a bulldog clip for the back of the mask and hold it tight to your face. That's another idea too. But I, the thing is, I'm going to be jumping around a bit and I don't want you to see it. I want it to be as authentic as possible. So the the other thing that I've done with the straight jacket is um, I've set it up to be able to put back on again next time, but I've made the straps on the back because there's five buckles down the back. I've made them extremely loose. So now I should just be able to pull it over my head. Just pull it on over like a jumper instead of um, make, making sure it's as tight as can be. Um, so that should suffice. I don't think anyone's going to notice that because I'm not really turning all the way around. So you're not really going to see that. So that's another way around it. Just have some more coffee and let's dump some of these vocalist parts in that look pretty cool. All righty, let's go back to the start. First, let's add this. Let's add the green screen effect to it. So we'll double click, click on the sucker. And as I showed you before, we should still have in this copy paste area here, I should be able to paste these effects in. And did that work? Or did I hit copy? It didn't work. Um, so what we shall do is go over here. Let's do it from the start. So we'll go over to green screen. So up the top here, I'm going to hit green screen, which is the first one. And there we go. It's made everything disappear. So there I am here with a, it's made everything black behind me. And as you can see with the footage, there's heaps of pixelation there. So it's chopped out a whole bit of the image. So let's jump back in and I'll show you another really cool trick that you can do with your chroma key. So we want to match the actual background. So if I hit that, there's a little eye up here. This turns on and off the effect. All right. So we want to turn this off. Now see this uh, color palette here. So the color is set to the actual green hashtag. So it's zero, zero, FF, zero, zero. But as you can see, the color here doesn't really match the green that's on my green screen. So what you can do is grab this eyedropper and drag it over to the actual green screen. So I'll probably take it to a darker portion of it, like down here, and select that. And now when I turn it on, we should be able to get a better result. So I'm just gonna pull down the hue range 
a bit there and then pull down the saturation range till we start getting a fuller version and see how we go so we're not doing too good what I might do is turn that off again and maybe go for the lighter let's try going a bit lighter up here oops I didn't want to go black there we go turn it back on that's going to be better right so you can already see up the top we've got a much better a fuller version of the head if we move this forward you will get and this is the problem I'm not going to get perfect with this because of the way it was filmed that's just something I'm going to have to live with it just is what it is until I reshoot all of this and can we get it at least close I know it's really boring this let's move to another part of the scene Now the best part about this is you have a fine tuning section here. It's these little arrows on the end. So once you get close to what you want, that's when you start fine tuning things. Now I'm gonna add a contrast to this and see if that helps. If we darken it up a little bit. And let's see what we can get. All right, so that's not helping any. Okay, that's better. Right, now that we've got it to this point here, these little arrows on each side, as you can see, these can help get things just that little bit finer. Let's see if we go down a bit. So I'm just holding down on the left on the hue range, on the, and you can see it's starting to fill in those gaps. So then we'll go forward on, on one of the other ones. And then down the it's it's a time consuming thing that's why like with recording music too that's why you want to make sure that your actual video footage that you get is as perfect it's like the same as recording music you want to make sure your vocal takes are as solid as you can get with no effects or anything on there that they're the right levels that everything's all set in stone that your initial take is good so you're not trying to fix it later on see this should be a lot easier than this but because of the take that i've done has uneven green screen behind it moving and the the shadow behind that's so strong that's why it's a lot harder to, to, to actually try and get this to happen. I'm going to try and minus this out a bit. And it's just not going to be perfect for this example. But we'll see if we can get it as close as we can. So it's a bit better. All right. That's probably the best I'm going to get it at this stage. I'm just going to take the saturation range up a bit and see if that fills in some of the blanks. It's just around the head now that there's some issues. So we're at 54.55. I'm going to try doing a large move. See if that makes any. So around 55 we're at. Let's try changing the hue range again. Right, so that's filling in a little bit more around the head. Let's change the brightness range a bit more. And it's 45.7. It's probably going to be the best we're going to get for right now. So I'm just going to stick with this. So we've got part of the head missing. That's And as you can see, the more I move it, you're getting this bottom problem down this bottom corner. So it's definitely a, an issue. And when I'm flailing my arms around, you're seeing like shadow under here. But this will all be fixed. So again, the, the reason I'm actually doing trying to do this show today is to show you 
the issues that you can have when making a green screen um, and what not to do and what to do so I mean you can you can try and fix things as much as you can but again as, as you're trying to fix things in post that's going to be a nightmare um, where what happened is I'll show you the difference let's just go over to so I'm just gonna mute out this channel see here with the guitarist I got a much better representation because I was standing way in front of the green screen so if I go and turn off the green screen on here let's have a look let's turn off this even though I've got shadow for some reason but I was much further in front so uh, I don't know uh, let's even try copying these effects here copy and we'll see what happens if we try and put these onto the vocalist effects so what I'll do is we'll bring this back I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit and then I'm gonna chop this here and so I'm just doing a test so I'm gonna test it on this footage at the end here just to see what it looks like so I don't ruin what I've already got we'll hit paste and we'll add these effects so look it's much better these are much better already we've just got that little bottom section that's causing some issues so let's try just putting it on this whole thing here so we'll go down here hit paste and then turn on these effects so it's a little better but what we've got is this bottom little section so let's see if we can fix that up and clean that up now so let's do that um, I'm going to change the bottom brightness range I'm going to turn this up and you should see that corner start to disappear hopefully see it starting to vanish it's a slow process I know look at that inch by inch it's slowly disappearing and it's not taking much away from the rest of the image but now it is and we can try and fix that up with one of the other channels cool so all that corner stuff is gone right now so instantly we've got a much better image there let's but you can see part of the head is missing so let's see if we can fix that up so we're at 71.5 see but it comes back somewhere else it's always somewhere else <laughs> never-ending story you just if something's fucked in the first instance it's fucked that's just how it is and you have to kind of accept it and go back and reshoot that just is what it is but that that's going to be pretty good for now i reckon even though we've got in somewhere like there we'll take a bit as much as we can so that's that's good enough for just today for what we're doing so do as i do as I say, not as I do, because when I did this, I did it shit. Let's be honest. I, I, I fucked it up. And um, we'll just turn on the effects back for this guitarist dude. And let's do some chopping up and putting some parts in place here. Cool. That, that kind of actually looks good. I thought it looked stupid because here's, here was my dilemma. I was trying to... Um, <laughs> I was trying to get this to happen, so I started singing at the same point as the music. But as you can see, trying to start the music while I've got those things on my hands was causing heaps of hassle. So, let's do this. So the music starts there. That's good enough. So we're going to chop this video footage here. We'll get rid of this track here at the front hit delete and we'll keep me popping up from below that kind of works I think for the opening scene <laughs> hello it's, I'm your friendly neighborhood gimp just popping up from the bottom of the screen um, 
Yeah, definitely. It being away from the screen, what it is too, it's not only the, the shadows. Shadows are normally not a big problem. What it is, it's the screen actually wavering back and forward along with the shadows. So you've got a shadow moving at the same time and, and the actual screen moving at the same time. That's when you're getting problems because I'm standing right on the screen. That's the biggest problem. Shadows by themselves aren't really normally a problem with when you're green screening. But because I was virtually standing on it and it was moving every time I moved around. So we can cut this right here um, into the next scene. So that's probably a good time for, to cut it. So let's hit the cut button. And so the next scene here is this bass player, which we'll leave in. And I'll let you know <laughs> what I'm going to do there. Let's just... And then we've got the guitarist shot. So I'm just going to keep cutting these. What I'm going to do is um, move up to at least we get to the next singer shot. We'll do another cut. And what I'll do with this one for now is I'll just turn it off. So I'll make it. Um, how do we do that? Um, the lighting, uh, look, I, I'll be honest too, um, that I have not shot any stuff like this before, um, with my two cameras. Now, because it was the first time, I will let you know that when I initially plugged in and shot the guitarist footage, the, my camera was really bright and there was like something wrong with the camera and I couldn't work it out. So within OBS, I changed the settings to make it look okay. And then later on that night, I had a chat with um, with Stu and Andy on on um, on Skype, and I was on camera for a little while wearing the mask, and my my camera shot was all washed out. Later on, I worked out when I uh, put my camera back on that something had got fucked up with the camera, and I had to unplug the camera and plug it back in. So all the settings had got all fucked because of something with the software or the cam the way that camera was plugged in, or I don't know what it was, but yeah, so the the two shots were very different. So that's another thing I have to explain as well. So when I do retake all of these shots, it's all going to be set up once. And once it's set up, then every shot will be filmed using that same shot, using that same image, uh, exactly the same settings on the camera. So, you know, if you are shooting all this stuff, it's best to do it all in one take. I did these over two different days two different time periods and had two different looks on the camera too. So there was clearly going to be issues. But, uh, and to be honest, this is, remember, I'm showing you guys how to do this, but at the same time, this is really the first time that I'm trying to make a music video in my bedroom with my own green screen, with my own cameras, doing this all on my iPad. So I'm learning this at the same time as well. I've made plenty of stuff using green screen images, like my movie and stuff using animation and using like drawings, photos, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I haven't actually done a lot of it, anything really with me moving around and trying to shoot a video clip. So I'm trying to teach you guys, but at the same time I'm learning as well. So I, I, I did learn a heap in the last two days of what not to do. And that's, again, what I say, This, especially this episode, is about what the fuck not to do. Because I was doing a lot wrong. And, you know, but there's nothing wrong with that as well. You live and learn. These are the mistakes we make. So what I'm going to do here, instead of deleting this file, I'm just going to turn down the opacity. So it's still sitting there above. As you can see, I've chopped it. Uh, here it is up here, but I've just turned down the opacity for it so we can see all the other clips. Now, uh, what have we got? So we've got these parts here. So I'm going to chop this again here. So let's go in here, chop this, click on it, cut it. Now we'll move along. What have we got here? So this is a close up of the bass player. Then we go to the drummer, kick drums. Then we go to a close-up of the singer. So we'll chop this again. And we'll chop this again here. And we'll try and find another shot where there's a singer. So back to Darth Vader, back to the old lady, and back to singer. So we'll chop this. 
we'll delete this one down below chop this here and then once I've chopped all these we can so this one needs to go that's the guitarist the old lady so all this is not necessary riot footage drama and this will be singer stuff so we can chop this guitarist chop scissors and this will be singer part as well here so we can chop this now we can zoom in and get rid of all these parts that I'm not using that have been chopped so that's this huge long bit here and again we just double click on it and in this frame and fit section down here you just scroll down and you've got this blending section down here in the bottom and I can just turn down the opacity so I'm keeping the clip but just turning down the opacity in there um, that's a vocalist bit all this can be turned down as well blending opacity down because I might want to use these parts further on so we can delete this cool and what else we don't need a vocalist here double click um all right so we've got this drum kick part in here so let's do this now i'm going to drag this scene behind so as you can see here we've got this drum kick down here and we're going to quickly cut to that in the chorus so i'm going to drag this down underneath the drum kick so the drum kick actually when when you travel along the drum kick actually overrides it because it's on top and then cuts back to the vocalist now what also what i'm going to do here is chop this vocalist here put a cut in there because i might want to zoom in on it so like for example so here's the scene of me jumping around here and then it cuts to the drum kick and then when it comes back i want to hit frame and fit down the bottom here and then i'm going to move over to the size and i'm just going to drag this and make it a bit bigger move it into place so we get this effect cool um let's go back to what else have we got so we've already turned that one down so here's the start and <laughs> i don't know I, I think i like this uh this popping up thing so let's have a look at it <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think I'm going to kind of keep that. To like when I reshoot the video, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay down and kind of climb up from the bottom. I think it looks really good. That's that's happening. Works for me anyway. Let me catch up on some comments here. Um, uh, I went black and white for my videos uh, so far because the mixed footage was inconsistent in color and lighting and frame. Um, so you guys are talking about your videos that's not lame Gary so um, I've only Tom Rochelle writes I've only done that on one video I'm working now on some lyric videos man lyric videos are so hard to do I swear to God good have a good time with that I find lyric videos to be so frustrating so we have and I'll let you know with this shot here how the character is moving alongside this prison cell I'm going to keep this prison cell bit and what I'm going to do is take footage of me sitting against the wall because my green screen will actually be against a wall I'm actually going to tape it to the wall uh, downstairs because I have a really big wall which will be able to hold it and I'm going to film myself in this costume sitting down with my knees kind of up holding the bass playing it 
but like like I'm leaning against these bars and I'm going to angle it, angle the camera so it looks like that I'm actually leaning and add me into the shot so it does look like I'm leaning against those bars and moving along with the footage. That's what I'm going to try and do. If that doesn't work, then I, I will change it. But that is the idea for that. Um, what else we got here? So there's the guitarist. Gonna Darth Vader. I'll show you this footage too. I, I might just... Let's just drag this footage in. Because this stuff... This is what I'm doing for the rest of the video. So I'll drag this in now. Over here, we have this file here. Let's take it right to the end just to drag this in for something to do because this isn't a green screen shot. This is the footage of that I took for uh, with the strobe when I was testing out the strobe. So here I've got the strobe which is taped underneath. My, it's my iPhone 6S taped underneath the camera and me just getting close to it. So I'll just play it for you. So this stuff came out really cool. I think that looks really good. Um, the eyes were fogging up a bit, unfortunately. So here I am. You can see I'm changing the uh, speed of the the flash to try and get some different kind of images. And I wasn't flush in front of the camera. Again, this is I was just testing out to see what I could do. So the iPhone works well to create a strobe effect for when I'm up close. Um, it just depends on it, what I can do with the strobe using three devices, standing up, see if I can get any effects. So this was a slower strobe. So it goes to show that, you know, you don't need to go out and buy a strobe light. You can use your phone. You can do that. And there's no green screen on this effect as well. So that was just me in the dark. So... You know, I'm not going to have to use a green screen for everything, definitely, because that, that, that's you can get different effects, especially for the close-ups. So that's that. That worked out really good. I'm really happy with that. And I'll, I'm going to shoot a whole bunch of those shots with each of the different masks on. So that's all good. I'm very happy there. Um, so while we're at this, and we've added in this footage here, what I want to try and do is search for some footage some riot footage. Let's see what we can find in here. So we'll do that and now you see where we're up to with the video clip. I just want to do a search for some riot footage. I'll show you this strobe light and then we'll call it quits because we're getting close to the hour. Um, so with Storyblocks in here, Storyblocks is a subscription. If you haven't seen this before, you pay it per month or per year. It can be fairly expensive but incredibly worth it instead of like signing up to other companies to get like uh, royalty free footage uh, video footage green screen stuff and all that kind of thing and it's embedded into luma fusion that's the best part about it that is awesome um, and to get to it there's a little menu up here and you can just click on story blocks and if you've paid for it and even if you haven't paid for it you can actually see all the stuff that you can use um, but if you try and use it it has like a voice over it saying property of story blocks or some shit like that um, so what we're going to look at is some footage so the top one and you've got all this video footage and we'll do a search for crowd um, we'll try riot first see if we get anything from that cool look at this state troopers load up police vehicle people protest burning the American flag oh Ooh. there we go look at that so there's going to be plenty of footage I can use out of this for these riot scenes look at that that's a pretty good opening for the fucking song really that's a world divided right there folks let's try bringing that in and replacing what we have because we've got six video tracks here so i'm just going to drag that into the timeline and you can see see how it's got these lines through it as well whenever you drag something in from story blocks it's pulling it down from the internet and you can see just over here there's this tiny little circle that's your download meter so you can see the little circles filling up so it's a lot of these files too they're, they're pretty big files they're high definition files so even though it only goes for 25 seconds 
it's a 1080p full high def file so that's why it's taking a little bit of time to download and while it's waiting i mean have a look at all this i just typed crowd riot and look at all these videos holy shit a group of men in balaclavas so uh, Portland police stands guard at protest, Helsinki, Finland protests, Ukraine pr protests, lots of things on fire, Ukraine, Kiev protests. So there's a whole lot of really cool shit that can be used in this clip. And cool. So there it is. It's now in the shot. And where I would start it would probably be about here. So let's put a chop in there. Let's delete that first bit. And look, that's close to the length that we have here. So let's cut off this last bit. This will just be a place filler for now. I'll be doing all this stuff last, all the riot footage, because I want to get the characters down first. So now we have, and let's just add an effect to it as well. So let's double click on it. As you can see, it fits in the frame nicely, but I want to make it like, um, dirtier I don't want it as clean so down the bottom here you've got all your effects and filters so I'm gonna throw a high kite um, contrast on it just to darken it up a bit because I really like that kind of stuff um, what else have we got cool so we've got like all this edge work here all these crazy filters like distortion stripes what do we got we can sharpen the stuff. Might sharpen it up a bit like twice just to make it that, that bit more gritty. Like that'll do for now. So yeah, as you can see, it's really easy to bring in this stuff. There's there's plenty of, let's go and have a look at what I see. So look, you've got fires burning here. So if this clip wants to load, there it is. So you can, this one's actually got sound. So yeah, some of the clips have sound as well. So this is even better. You know, oh God, I, I can't believe I actually use this other one now that one's heaps good i would replace that look at that i can just delete that how easy is it grab this one pull this one in that one's heaps cool let's cut that and then i don't even have to use those effects so um and once this downloads, we'll wrap it up. I'll show you this flashing torch light thing that I used. Deep gravity. Be cool if you could get a red light in that mask to light up the eye holes. Look, I probably can do that somehow. I'm sure I could. I think I've got some little lights somewhere around here I could probably stick in there, even if it was one light. Um, I've got some mesh too I was planning on putting in the, that one because it's clear where the other mask I have is actually already got mesh in the holes. Um... All right, so let's have a look at here. Let's mute out. Let's have a look at this now. And what we'll do, again, I'm just going to add a high contrast to it. Or we'll add just a medium contrast. This looks much better. And remember, in shots like this too, before we do finish, you can do things like this as well. Because you've got these timeline markers, which if you've watched before, you'll know this. So down the bottom here, you see this size and position. So as soon as we're at the start, this is how you do it. Always take your marker to the start, click size and position. Then take your marker to the end and click this little dot. And then from there, there you've got your start point and end point marked. 
and from anywhere now you can actually change this so if, if I put a marker here and then put a little dot in there then I put maybe a dot here and a dot here so now I've got three dots there in the middle so if I click on this dot here I can just scroll through so I can now pinch to zoom I'm using my fingers here and I can pinch to zoom in on this fire now if I move to the next part I can boop, 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 boop. don't do that um, where are we let's get out of there I hate when I do that so now I can actually pull this back Okay, so why have I done that? Um, Robbie, there's the first one. So that's zoomed in. All right, this one's already zoomed out. So we can bring this out to about here. And then on the third marker, we can pull it, uh, we can zoom right in on the fire. And now, so I've got three points there. This one, so it starts off far away on the next point it zooms in a little the next point it pulls back the next point it zooms right in and on the last point it's back out to zero so now when you look at this one clip you can actually make it more interesting than what it is than what it initially was So you can get super creative with video that's already planned. And you know, that was really quick what I did there, but you can understand what I mean. You can get really creative just by putting those markers and creating animated points to zoom in. You can change the, the, um, uh, uh, like the contrast with those points as well. You can fade with those points. You can do a whole lot of things with all the effects built into the, that little edit screen in there. So let's, quit that for now I'll show you this app I have here and then we'll get out of here for the day so it's called iTorch you can see it over here super simple to use when you open it up um, as you can see it's a, it's made for iPhone so and it's got ads yeah I think it's, you pay three dollars something to get rid of the ads but I mean why would you bother and so at the moment my torch is on and when you move this it actually changes to a, a slow flash. And when you move it this way, it's hyper fast. And you've got some options here. So this is this little option to the side um, creates like a random flashing. So it'll be one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. It just does a whole bunch of random flashing. And then you've got some settings here where you can add sound effects. So every time you click the buttons, they make a noise or a shake to activate. Don't know if there's much more, so not, not much more. So it's a really simple app. You can change the look of it, make it bright or make it black. It's free to download. So that's really cool as well. And that's what I'm using for my, how do I get back now? Goodness me, Charlie Brown. I don't even know how to get back to it. Uh, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Let's just try. <laughs> I think that's because I'm on my iPad. That's why it's and it's sideways on my iPad. You're seeing it right up, but I'm seeing it sideways. So, yeah, it's just an on and off switch. That's pretty much all it is. Settings. You can change this lever here. And yeah, it's pretty basic. It's one of the first Torch apps that ever really came out it's super old this thing came out back on the iphone 3g that's <coughs> excuse me that's how old this thing is super old app i was really surprised that they've still been updating it for ios um, but yeah it's called itorch so if you do a search in the uh, app store you can find that and that can help you doing doing your flashy shit <coughs> um yeah, so Tom Michelle said, um, I've had iTorch before on the iPhone. It had a flashlight built in, yeah. It was the only way you could do it back in the day. Exactly. So, so there you go. That is today's show. 
Hopefully you learned something from today how not to do green screen and how to try and get around to fix it as best as you can. I showed a little bit of like, you know, getting those the footage for the riots, which is going to be plenty of that stuff in there. Showed you briefly some little tricks on how to move the, the, the images forward and back and changing within that, uh, in that video. So if you did get something out of today, hit the like, share, do all that kind of stuff. If you're watching on the replay, you'll be seeing like a little screen come up now with subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe, watch the playlist. You can go back. There's 97 episodes so far. Tomorrow we're doing an interview with the lads from the Indigo Sunsets. Can't wait for that. So usual time. It's going to be really cool. Hope you can join us for that. And you'll be the first to get to hear their music. So that's really cool also. And... Monday, we'll be back here looking at the clip and hopefully by Tuesday, I will be releasing it on the 100th episode of the show. Can you believe it? 100 episodes! Holy shit. Really exciting stuff. So thanks guys. Everyone have a really good day. Be good to yourself. I know Pete would normally say and others, but I'm in lockdown at the moment, so I don't get to see anybody. So just do what makes you happy. Do the things that put a smile on your face. And if it's not making you happy, stop doing it. Do something else. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow. Adios.